فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم Okay inshallah ta'ala we're now going to be speaking about the way and the method in which an Islamic leader can be appointed We're now going to be speaking about what is the Islamic method <coughs> What is the Islamic method of appointing a leader? And how do we do it? There, there are two ways in which an Islamic leader can be appointed. The first tariqah, the first way is اختيار أهل الحل والعقد It is اختيار the choosing of أهل الحل والعقد they're the ones who choose who's going to be the leader. And this is the asal. This is the default position. And it's the Ahlul Halli wal Aqd. As some ignorant people would say that you won't find them in the Quran, you won't find them in the, uh, the uh, scripture, you won't find it in the Nusus. Then this is. It's a speech that we don't give no consideration to. Ahlul Halli wal Aqd is present in the Sunnah and it is also present in the Ijma' of the Qurun al Mufaddala. The noble three generations, it was present amongst them. Who are Ahlul Halli wal Aqd? Ahlul Halli wal Aqd are a group of righteous and noble people in their religion also they are smart and they are clever they have good opinions they are also people of a tadbir they are leaders they know how to run things and they also are Wujaha, Wujaha and Nasi are, they represent people, they represent their community. They can be chief, tribes, tribe leaders, and etc. There are conditions that have to be found in the Ahlul Halli wal Aqd. The conditions that have to be found in them are seven conditions, or else they are not Ahlul Halli wal Aqd. The first one is Al-Islam. They have to be Muslims. So a disbeliever cannot be from Ahlul Halli wal Aqd. As Allah said in the Quran, وَلَنْ يَجْعَلَ Allah. Allah is not one who is going to make لِلْكَافِرِينَ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ سَبِيلًا Allah does not make leadership of the disbeliever over the believers whatsoever. This is بِإِجْمَاعِ الْعُلَمَاء وَلَنْ يَجْعَلَ اللَّهُ so that's why the scholars they take from this verse that the girl's father, if he's a disbeliever, he's not there with her wali. He has no wilaya over her. He's not her guardian. So even if he can't be a leader for his own daughter, he can't be a guardian for his own daughter, how is he going to be a leader and a uh, and responsible over the Muslims as a whole? And this is the ijma'. There's no khilaf amongst two ulama. From the Sahabas and the Tabi'in and the Tabi'u Tabi'in. It's something they now want to open discussions on. The second is Al Aql. He has to be sane. He has to be a. And when we say Aql, it doesn't just mean sane. He has to be a very smart person. So he can't be an immature little person, a little immature young boy. Or he can't be a crazy person. Now, he can never come into the fold of Ahlul Halli wal Aqd. But if he's young and he's smart, he won't be pushed away because of his age. And Ibn Abbas was what? Ibn Abbas was in the inner circle of who? He was, the inner, he was in the inner circle of. Um, uh, Umar the 
condition is not age. No one brings age. Number three is ar-rujula. He has to be a man. A woman is not allowed to be from Ahlul Hal wal Aqd. She's not. Allah said in the Quran, الرجال قوامون على النساء بما فضل الله بعضهم على بعض وبما أنفقوا من أموالهم that the men are in charge of the women so if a woman is part of أهل الحل والعقد then that means her husband has to be because he's in charge of her <coughs> or if a woman is the leader of a country her husband tells her what to do so he's running the country she's not and the Prophet told us, alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, لَن يُفْلِحَ قَوْمٌ A people will not find prosperity. وَلَّوْ أَمْرَهُمْ إِمْرَأَةٌ A woman is running their affairs. Bukhari narrated this. What's the martaba? What is the level of Sahih Bukhari? Brothers, أَصَحُّ كِتَابِ بَعْدَ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ It is the most authentic book after the book of Allah. Isn't that the case? Now today you narrate this hadith, you're in trouble. Ah, oh, you're in trouble. Your YouTube channel will be closed down. And you have a lot of problems. Now, nah. So the woman, she's not allowed to. She's not from Ahlul Halli Wal Aqd. If she can't be from Ahlul Halli Wal Aqd, can she lead the people? From Ibn Abil Election today, a woman consulted. How can it be Shura? How can it be Shura? No one consulted the women. La Umar, wala Bakr, wala Uthman, wala Ali. No one consulted the immature ones. In this country, how old do you have to be in order to do elections? 18, right? Huh? Look at our 18 year olds right now. What are they doing? Sah? So, selling drugs on the streets. That guy goes and he puts the letter in the pallet. Oh, he votes and he puts his voice in. His voice is equal to the voice of Al-Allam, Al-Muhaddith, Al-Faqih, Al-Mufassir. They have the same voice. So, the taxi driver, his voice is the same as Ibn Ubaz. Okay. When I say taxi driver, I don't mean taxi drivers because of his job. But I mean the one who doesn't know anything. He doesn't know his right hand from his left hand in the religion. His voice becomes the voice of the, the, the righteous, the scholars, the scholastic people, the people who are looking at the masalih and the mafasid and the benefits of the ummah. Fourth is hurriya, he has to be a free person, he's not allowed to be a slave. Number five is a taqwa, piety. He has to be what? Piety. When we say piety, it means he has to be far, because some people would say, oh, piety, are you saying it's infallible? No, we're not saying that. Let's explain what we mean by it. We mean ijtinabul kabair. He stays away from major sins. And adamul israri al sagair. And the minor sins, he's not consistent on it. If it happens from him, he runs back to Allah and he asks for forgiveness. When he does a mistake and a shortcoming occurs from him, he runs back to Allah wa Taala, and he asks for forgiveness. So here the taqwa is that he stays away from the major sins and he's not consistent upon the minor, minor sins. <coughs> How can we know that a person has taqwa? The way we can know a person has taqwa is Shuhra, it becomes famous. Istifada, people all hear about it. Today, what do we hear about Sheikh Abdul Aziz ibn Ubaz? What do we hear? Uh, عَلَى اللَّهِ أحد. We don't praise in the eyes of Allah anyone, as the Prophet said. عَلَيْهِ صَلَاةُ وَسَلَامُ وَلَا نُزَكِّ عَلَى اللَّهِ أَحَدْ وَاللَّهُ حَسِيبُ But from what we know from Sheikh Abdul Aziz ibn Ubaz, or what we read from his life, and those who studied with him, and those who took knowledge from him, and those who saw him, it became a mahal tifaq amongst everyone who wrote his biography, and no mikaina min ahli taqwa, that he was from the people of piety. Rahimahullah, amilun bi'ilmihi, one who implemented the knowledge he had. So, so who ahlu taqwa? That's how we know. Istifada. 
Este, este fado. Well, idealic, what we know is man tashabbaha bima laysa fihi fadahatu shawahid al-layali. Anyone who tries to make himself be what he really isn't, time will expose, expose him. And your taqwa and your piety will become clear to the people. Number six is al ilm knowledge. The sixth thing that's conditioned is knowledge. The jahil, rabi, the dimwitted one, the ignorant one, the fool. He's not from Ahlul Hal wal Aqd. Who doesn't know, hasn't got knowledge. The knowledge here is, are you with me brothers? Is that knowledge of the dunya and knowledge of the hereafter. Both the knowledges, he has understanding of it. <clears throat> Number seven is what? Adam will intiba ila ahli lahwa. He has to not attribute himself to a deviated group. He can't be from Ahlul Bida. He can't be from Ahlul Bida. Why? Because Ahlul Bida, what will they do? They will push the government and they will take the government towards what? Towards their bid'a and their dalalat, their misguidance and their innovation. So he's going to choose a person. He's going to tell the leader, "Oh, I think this person should be the lead, the next leader," or "I think you know you should choose this person as the MP," uh, or "You should make this person the the, the governor." Uh, and that that's what happened to Imam Ahmed last time. Where did the leader take on? And they inherit this concept that the Quran was created. It came from who? Bitana Tasu. The Bitana Tasu are those who sit under the leader who whisper in his ear. So that the person who is from Ahlul Halli wal Aqd, it has to be a person who is belief and his aqidah is what? Sound. Last but not least is that al bulugh he has to reach age of puberty. Ayyakuna Baligat he has to reach age of puberty. The question is Ahlul Halli wal Aqd are they an amount or can it be a very large number? Are you with me, brothers? What we say is Ahlul Halli wal Aqd la yushtaratu fihi adad mu'ayyan An amount is not necessarily it's not condition We don't say 6, 5, 4, 3 or that No As long as they fall under these conditions Are you with me? As long as they And this is important brothers and This is going to help us with an argument and a shubha that is brought forward For what? Abdul Rahman ibn Auf, what he did. That he went to the people of Medina and locked their doors. We believe he went to the Ahlul Hal wal Aqd. The people who fell under these conditions. If we take those narrations. And when we respond to it, we'll, we'll explain it properly. But you have to remember this. A number is not, is not restricted to a number. As long as they fall under these conditions. What is the job of Ahlul Hal wal Aqd? What's their job? What are they meant to do? They have two things which they have to do. The first one is, if more than one person comes forward, and more than one person, come forward is an incorrect term that I used, it was a slip of a tongue. Because no one is allowed to bring himself forward for leadership in our religion. Abu Dhar, Billahi alaykum, a noble companion, Abu Dhar al-Ghifari, right? You know him, right? Abu Dhar said to the Prophet, Are you not going to use me? Are you not going to place me in charge of something? The Prophet looked at him and said, Ya Abu Dhar, innaka rajulun da'if. You're a weak man. And this issue is responsibility. Wa inna hasratun wa nadama comes with it is regret. Noble companion is being said. And the scholars, they said that this is not a criticism against Abu Dhar. What it means is that some people are weak in the sense where they can't really judge between two people because the person who just killed the person just cries and you start crying with him. When you're a judge, the crying shouldn't get in the way of the, the facts that are in front of you. So, are you with me? The crying shouldn't get in the way of the facts. You look at what's there 
and what, he, what should be done, right? So Abu Dhar was a very soft person. Anyone who came to him, he would just give them money. And this is money that has to be done with the, the system and the government. He'll just give. He'll just help people, get emotional with the people. Leadership is for a person who is like Umar, radiallahu anhu, strong. He's qawi and he's ameen. So the job of the Ahlul Hal wal Aqd is that if more than one person is befitting, amongst themselves they discuss, they say so and so, what do you guys think? Everyone goes, yeah, you know what, Allah subhanAllah, he's, he's, he's a person we all had in mind. But what about so and so? More than one name comes forward. Does that make sense? No one deals with the leader. No one talks to him. These people are the ones who are choosing. So what do they do? They choose for the people who they think is right. And he comes into power. He comes into power. Are you with me, brothers? With what? With the choice, the consultation of these individuals. Ahlul Hali wal Aqd. Now look at election. And look at democracy. Are you with me, brothers? Does Shura and this come together? What are Ahlul Hal wal Aqd doing? Are they initiating a ruling? They're not initiating any law. Are they giving the authority, the leader authority to, to, to legislate on their behalf? Are they giving the leader of the country to legislate on, on their behalf? No, they're not. What Ahlul Shura are doing is men who from these two people are aslah lil imamah. Who is the most befitting one for leadership? Well, Riyasa. They can come to this conclusion because of the fact that they have Islam and they have Aql and they have Rujula and they have Hurriya and they have Taqwa and they have Ilm. And there is no preconceived belief in their hearts that's pushing them to lead towards Yes, the hearts are clean. Election is what my beloved brothers and sisters. Everybody who you see, whether he's righteous, whether he's it doesn't matter. His voice counts. Now when you come to the people and you say election is haram. Are you there? When you say to the people, election is haram. Fear Allah, stay away from election. Don't choose it. Are they going to be inclined to your speech? Why? They're not, most likely, they're not going to be inclined to your view. The reason why they're not is because you're telling the person you're not being ahli, you know, a taqwa, and you're not from ahli al-hal wal-aqd, and you're not deserving to be consulted. Your words have no value. Your words, this gets to people. My voice has to count. I want to be known. I want, I want, I want to choose. Taqwa and Iman is what makes you realize that I am not Ahlul Hal wal Aqd. I can't place any force on anyone. I can't choose. Who am I to choose? I was taken back and hope Allah Ta'ala with the choice of our brothers and our righteous scholars what they choose. Are you with me, brothers? The second job is they are the ones who supervise the bay'ah taking place. So they choose and they also they take the bay'ah. Are you with me, brothers? What do we what do we mean they take bay'ah? Sometimes they are you with me? They take the bay'ah and the people don't have to. Halwal Aqd already did it. No one else has to. Everyone just has to submit. Not every single person has to go to the leader and say, Ubayyuka ala sab'i wa ta'a fi man shatina wa makrahina wa yusrina wa usrina wa atharatul alayna. No, not everyone has to do that. Ahlul Halli wal Aqd, they take over that from the people. They do it. And so they tell the leader, As sab'u wa ta'a fi ghayrim, fi ghayril ma'asiyah. We listen to you, we obey you in that which is not haram. We will do that fil man shati wal makrah. Times of ease and times of hardship. Okay? And we won't go against you as a leader. Are you with me, brothers? And bay'ah, brothers, is fardu kifai. It's not fardu ayin everybody to do it. There are scholars differ. Sahih is that fardu kifai. (coughs) 
the second way that a Muslim leader is elected is and is appointed is what is known as al istikhlaf. Istikhlaf is the leader who's already in position. The leader who's already in position will say to an individual, you are the one, you are my successor, right? You are my successor. As Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he did for who? Umar radiallahu anhu. And there are conditions that the scholars stipulate. There are, scholars, there are conditions that the scholars stipulate for the istikhlaf to be sahih and to be correct. If the Muslim leader, pay attention, are you with me? The one who is doing the istikhlaf. Are you with me? Let's sit, pay attention to his brothers. Pay attention. Pay attention. The Muslim leader. What are the conditions that he needs to come with? He's Islam. He has hurriya. He's bulugh, aqal, dhukur, adala. Right? All of that. When the Muslims choose him, as time goes on, he can change, right? If he changes and he loses the factors that he was chosen for, are you there? Brothers, pay attention. And then he does his tikhlaf, it won't be accepted from him. Are you with me? His tikhlaf is taken on board if the conditions are still present in him. That's the first condition. And there's another surah that we're going to take later. Are you with me? Which is the third form, which we're going to see later. That's not shar'i, but he has to be obeyed and he has to be listened to. Anyways, the second form, I mean, the second condition that is needed for the istikhlaf is what? That the one who is appointing the other leader, like when Abu Bakr appointed Umar, Umar has to accept it. If he rejects it and says, I'm not going to do it, then there's no istikhlaf. Nothing worked. Third is that the one who it is being passed on to has to be present. Or he's in the ruling of the one who's present. He's gone, but he's coming back. The fourth condition is that when he's passing it on to him, the leader has to be alive. The leader has to be alive who's passing it on and appointing. Are you there? He can't have written it on a letter or something like that. So he does it all while he's alive. And Abu Bakr did that while he was on his deathbed. The fifth one is he has to have consulted are you with me? Ahlul Halli wal Aqd and they agreed with him on this without him forcing them or putting them under duress. Last but not least are you with me? The ones the person who he is appointing the one who is, the one who he is appointing, has to be not from his descendant. It can't be from his um, parents and up, and it can't be from his children and down. It can't be a kingdom. It can't be a monarchy. Yeah. No. And there are two reasons why it can't be. The first one is we follow the path of the Khulafa al-Rashidin, al-Mahdiyin. We were told to what? 
Addu alayha bin Lawajid. Hold on to it with your molar teeth. The Khulafa al-Rashidin didn't do that. The four guidely Khulafa, they didn't do molar, they didn't pass it over to their children. The second is, <coughs> it goes against our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's methodology. What do we mean by the Prophet's methodology and the Prophet's way? The Prophet alayhi sallam, who was the best companion in his eyes? Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And who was present? Ali was there, his own cousin. His own daughter was alive, Fatima, radiallahu ta'ala anha. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, at that level of virtue and everything, he didn't make it something that's inherited, because you're my, for my family, you have to have this, la. But what I do need to mention is that, what I do need to mention is that, if this happens, that the leader does appoint somebody after that and he passes it over to his child. And it does happen to that, that does happen. There's no legis, there is no, there is no right for any individual to refuse to give bay'ah. And that's exactly what happened in the Umawi and the Abbasi dynasty, right? We have to listen and we have to obey. The other point that needs to be, and it's a very important, important point, which is, which of the two paths is better? The istikhlaf or the ikhtiyar ahli al-hal wal aqt The first path and the second one, which of the, which of the two is better? Well, rajihu, the strongest, is that ikhtiyar ahli al-hal wal aqt is the best. The choosing of ahli al-hal wal aqt is better. Just like the Messenger والسلام, did not directly and clearly say that Abu Bakr should take after me or Fulan needs to take after me. The Prophet left it. Who did he leave it for? Ahlul Halli wal Aqd. Are you with me? Are you with me, brothers? So if the Prophet وسلم, left it, based on the choosing of Ahlul Halli wal Aqd, then that's the best path, right? That's the best path. Best path. Are you with me, brothers? Also, there are circumstances, there are circumstances when the istikhlaf is actually better. <coughs> when the person sees, when the person sees after him, there's going to come a lot of facade and a lot of corruption if he doesn't put his finger down on a particular individual. He fears that he may cause havoc and he may cause harm. In that circumstance, <coughs> he should choose a person and appoint a person. The reason for that, dar al khilaf. Because he's trying to get rid of the khilaf that may come and also bring the people together. There is a, those are the two shar'i ways that a Muslim leader is appointed. Brothers, those are the two methods and they are the two ways a Muslim leader is appointed. When you now look at this democracy system, the governments today in the Western countries, and you look at America, you look at America as well. Are they from? Do they follow this way? Not from anywhere close, nor from anywhere far. Sah. So, 